Hello. We're here to talk to you today about Tesla. Tesla? Tesla. Tesla. We love Tesla. Not Nikola Tesla, but... <laughs> the, the car company, yeah, right? Yeah, Tesla's are sweet. Car company, Tesla. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Just kidding. <laughs> Though we love Teslas, we actually talk about them a lot. We, we're, we're consumed with electric Tesla. But I, I promise this state, this channel is not purely about Teslas. But oh. there's so much going on though that we kind of we got to talk about. It. But normally we talk about new Teslas. What's coming out? What's yeah. coming out now? What's coming down the line? What's going to be coming out in five years? Today we want to talk about buying a used Tesla. We're getting to that point in the market where what Tesla's been around for like what three, five years now. Just kidding. No, they've actually been around for a while. We know that, but but really they've been relevant. It's real relevant in the market yeah, years, yeah. for maybe four or five years yeah. since the Model S came out. Now the Model Three, which is yep. a more commonplace type Definitely. of car, some, most people can afford to buy. Yeah. But before we get into that conversation today, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Blinker Fluid TV. Do it now. You don't want to miss out. Do it now, or I'm going to come hunt you down and give you a wet willy. What will <laughs> Or a swirly, whatever. Whichever one you like the least. <laughs> so definitely take a second, hit the button, and we'll be back. So as Brian mentioned, we normally focus on like the new cars, the new, uh, like the next best thing. And the cool thing about the next best thing, which is what? Model Y. The Model Y. And the Cybertruck, but <laughs> the one that's coming out well, hold on that. is Dude, the Model Y. We have so much to, <laughs> to talk about the, the Cybertruck. We've got a whole other video coming for that. But definitely the Model Y is coming and um, why that's so significant, and there's a lot of reasons it's so significant, but um, it's significant because whether or not you're buying a Model Y, it affects a lot of people in lots of different ways. So I guess, uh, like you said, I mean, the, the, the Tesla really became a little bit back in 2015, um, 16, yeah. when the S really started what, getting some traction. Right? Yeah, so they officially came out in 12 and 13. 12, people yeah. were kind of hesitant to buy, yeah. you know, because they were they were concerned, like, this is a brand new company. Like, if it's a freaking startup tech company, like, you'd never buy, yeah. I mean, I did. You'd never buy a phone that you that had no track record. Right. And speaking of Model S, there are 10,000 people out there around the world who have had confidence in us and have reservations for a car they've never even driven. Most of them have never even sat in it. And there are 10,000 of, the, of them out there who have inspired us to make sure today happens. So we have a message today. On behalf of all Roadster owners, Model S reservation holders, every employee here today, every employee out there on the web visiting us today, I have three words. We did it! That's right. So, I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. I mean, if you, right, like right now, any of the cars on the market, if you had, if money didn't really matter, what Tesla would you buy currently? I love Model S. Yeah? I 100% love it. Maybe. If I had the money, P100D. <laughs> yeah. I bet an 85, I wouldn't complain about. Yeah. Um, I think I would go a little newer, probably 2016, 2017 newer. So you have the autopilot and you have all the newest technology Definitely. in it. I'd like that. Um, Got to be the D, the dual motor, because I like all-wheel drive. I need that. I go up in the yeah. mountains a lot in the winter. I love Makes to, a difference. I love to do some of my winter sports. So, well, you might be in luck, and here's why. So, as we've kind of alluded to a little bit, there's there's a lot of changes happening, and because of the fact that there's the Model Y coming out, we don't know who's going to be buying the Model Y. Cool. We know they've got, you know, 100, at least 100. They've been, Tesla's been really quiet about the pre-orders that they have. Yeah. The only information we have is like, is at least 100,000. 
So if they sell 100,000 units, who's buying those cars? I mean, is it people that are already currently in a Tesla? Is it your new people who haven't had a Tesla before? Like, what do you think? I mean, you know, it's priced pretty well. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's comparable to like a mid-size crossover in yeah, my, like in my a, mind, right? Like an Explorer or something like Not that? Not even Explorer, kind of, well, yes, but almost the size of like those, those smaller Audi SUVs, like the, what, the Q3? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, maybe a uh, Honda, like kind of Honda Pilot size. Honda CRV type of size. Mm -hmm. CRV is obviously the smaller one. Um, what else am I thinking of? You know, uh, Toyota Rav Four, but yeah, definitely much true. nicer Toyota Rav Four. Well, um, so I think, you, but then you can. It's kind of in that middle market where you you appeal to people that want a smaller SUV. Yeah, definitely. But that also want luxury. I mean, it's a luxury vehicle. It, it really is, but like. It's crazy it's better than it. a Toyota RAV4 is my point. Yeah, it's not really like I. I mean, I don't even. I haven't looked at RAV4 numbers at all, but I'm willing to bet their their high end RAV4s are pretty comparable. Um, and Toyota is a company that's been around for a long time. People trust it. So I guess I'm just speaking from my experience, and I'm not trying to bag on Toyota here. It's not my point. Having driven a Toyota RAV4, it felt a little on the. Gutsy sign or gutless? Gutless, um, <laughs> just kind of a mass market vehicle type of feel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just it's like they put these out to sell five hundred thousand units or however many they sell, mm -hmm. rather than appealing to you know people that are looking for nice a nice SUV. It's just yeah. a mass market type of SUV. Does that does that yeah. point make sense? I yeah. mean, I wasn't impressed with the doors; they were tinny. They sounded they sounded cheap. Um, just you know the workmanship feel, and I'm not. Actually, I actually I love Toyotas. Yeah, they're good I think cars. they make good vehicles. Yeah. I've owned a few of them. So I'm not bagging on Toyota by saying that. Mm -hmm. My point is, I think that let that that the that the um, Tesla Model Y starts to appeal towards maybe a different type of buyer. Like somebody wants something like like the Rav4 or the CRV, but wants something nicer. Yeah, and yeah. almost crossing into that market of like a Audi buyer. Yeah, I think or so. Or a BMW X3 buyer. I, I I agree. I, I feel like uh, I mean we're gonna and we're gonna put a a poll out there because I'm really curious the kind of people that are actually genuinely buying these cars, the people who are interested. I mean, look back at the Model S when it first came out. I mean, they said you could buy it for like fifty grand, but I mean you really can't buy a Model S for less than about eighty. Right. Um, new anyway. Yeah, I mean, new. Um, the Model Three. I mean, they said it was going to be a thirty-five thousand dollar car. We'll start at thirty-five. But it's like forty-one. For, yeah, like, legitimately. Right, and then the model uh, and Y is the. Sorry, I mean to cut you off. Yeah, yeah. But that base model three does that even include autopilot? Does that include? I think you um, pay extra for some I of those things, don't you? Don't believe it does. Here, or maybe I don't. I need to look at numbers again, but. Um, so it's not dual motor. <clears throat> it's not dual for sure. No, it's not drive. performance. We know that no. it's not your performance. It's no. your standard it's range your base. of force. It's they call the long range. It's like three hundred and ten or something. It's not bad. It's not terrible, but so you've got you've got the Model S, right, which is about eighty-five grand new. Mm -hmm. The Model Three, which is about forty to start. Well, I guess you can buy a Model S for about seventy-five. Yeah, um, and then you got the Model X, which like you can't buy new for less than like eighty-five. Kind of the same deal as the S, right? Yep. But now the Y. So like the the whole reason behind the Y is that there's a lot of people like I mean they expect Tesla expects to outsell all their other cars with this one car. Well, so. I think obviously they're following the trend because mm -hmm. more and more people are moving toward SUVs. Look at sedans Ford. are going out of style. <laughs> yeah. I actually like sedans. He has the Model S sedan. Yeah. I like sedans, but I can see the appeal of a crossover, a smaller SUV. Yeah. But so, it, even in the sense of the Y, it has, that's a third row, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's actually what I was, so I was just thinking about that, like that that technically the the Model Three and the Model Y are Pretty much the same cars, as far as I understand. Yes. The Your Model 3 has platform. 15 uh, cubic feet of storage, uh -huh. and the Model Y has like 60, uh -huh. which is, that's crazy difference. But they really look the same. It's, a, like it's just taller. It's, yeah. just, it's just got a... I don't know if they use the same chassis. No, it is. It's built on the same. Is it really? Yes, it is. Well, it really, like, I when we were in California the other day, I saw in front of us, I, I saw in my life it was a Model Y. 
Because I thought for sure it was a Model 3. I'm like, there's no way because like the Model 3 is not a hatchback. Mm -hmm. But it was definitely a little taller. It was not a Model X because I just had a Model you X previously. You know the Model X, yeah. And uh, it, was, it was interesting. And I, I love the Model Y. And, and I don't love it because I'm going to buy it. I love it because of one thing. The market disruptor? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Is but that the reason? I think the, the reason is, I mean, if you are in the market for a used car, if you're in the market for a used Tesla, this is the time to buy. The reason why is when was when were they originally expected to launch the Model Y? Do you remember? It's like late know. fall this year. Yeah. So we there was an announcement just a few days ago that they're six months ahead of schedule. Wow. So they're going to be in driveways the first quarter of this next year. So That's like, unheard of for Tesla because they're usually yeah, behind schedule, they're right? They're way behind. Like <laughs> they're like six months to like nine nine years behind yeah. schedule, but right. six months ahead of schedule. Good. So what that does, and I obviously it's because of the Gigafactory. Um, well, I know they're, their batteries. They've got a new one out in, uh, in China. There's a new one in China. They yeah. just had it approved. Yeah. So with that, what does that do for the market? What does it do for the other cars? What's happening to if if we've got a whole bunch of people buying this Model Y because that's where most of the people in the market want to be? What's happening now to all those Model S's, the X's, and, and the threes? What percentage of people are going to be trading over? It's an interesting point. I, I haven't really thought that way the whole way through, but if I had to just... He's put me on the spot here. What do I think? <laughs> yeah, what do you as think? As, do the, you think? as the mass market, and that's, maybe that's you, starts moving from sedan, especially like a mm -hmm. smaller Honda Civic type vehicle, to a girl like something that's a smaller commuter car, right? Mm -hmm. It's good gas mileage. That's the reason you own it. Yeah. Right. So those type of buyers maybe went for the Model Three, or maybe have held out, thinking I'd like to buy one, but it's just yeah. not quite right for me. Maybe the Model Y is, because now you've got a crossover. So they don't call it a crossover, but in my mind, it's yeah. a crossover because it's that Definitely. size of vehicle. Well, and and the interesting thing about it, I think if you, you've got a lot of people, there's a segment in the market right now where you've got the um, you've got the Equinox, you've got the, uh, what's just bigger than Equinox? I forget. Um, you got GMC Acadia. You've got you know your Chevy Blazers. You got um, you got you've had Equinox, right? Yeah, On so the you've Pilot got, Seat Seven. So you've got all these people that are like right there in the. Yeah, they're not like ride. a full size car, right? And that's where most people want to be. They feel more comfortable because they're higher up. Yeah. You've got all-wheel drive usually. Yeah. You've got a little bit more storage storage capacity. So if you can have a fully electric car for like 50 grand and replace all that and not have a minivan that's pretty cool well you make a fair point because i know for a lot of people and kind of think i would put myself in the same boat there where you have one vehicle that you use to commute to work every, yeah. every day because you want to save on gas mileage you're not going to take your big chevy tahoe to work necessarily <laughs> or your your minivan or whatever or it is trip or something it's a big vehicle it might take a lot of gas right yeah. so you use that on the weekends or for, like you said, when you go on vacations, right? Yeah. Now you kind of have the best of both worlds where with the Model Y, especially with the longer range they're getting out of the Teslas now, mm -hmm. right? What's the Model Y going to get to 370 now? I think it's actually just shy of the of what the Model 3 is at okay. because it's a bigger, bigger car, same capacities. It's going to get a little bit less range. So you have a vehicle that's going to get good range, 300 plus. About 300, yeah. Right? You have all the capabilities of an SUV. So now you don't have to worry about commuting anymore, yeah. more especially if you have a play, if you have a way to charge up at work. Or I mean, you're not going to worry about it. You're not going to tow with it, definitely. I mean, no. like you shouldn't with the minivan. You shouldn't with the small uh, SUV like that anyway. And to be honest, the towing is probably my main reason not to purchase yet. Yeah. So you got you got functionality with the minivan. You've got style with the with the SUV, and then what, what's the third missing element? Well, how about performance? So what if, what if you could have a car that has more functionality than a minivan, more style than an SUV, and more performance than a sports car? That's the Model X.
So one of the main inventions of the Model X is something we call the falcon wing doors. So, and, and driving the car is Franz von Holzhausen, our head of design. And then we've also got uh, six of the key uh, engineers and designers behind the Model X. You'll notice these are not small people. All right, so with all this talk about the Model Y, this is one thing that's been buggy. It's been on my mind for weeks. And especially now that they've announced that the Model Y is coming out six months sooner. Yeah. So when we had, so my Tesla was recently in the shop, as yep. you know. Mm -hmm. I had a door handle while we were down at SEMA. Mm -hmm. um, the door handle got stuck out. Yeah. And they're supposed to go back in. And so you couldn't get in the car on that one side without going, you know, reaching in and pulling the handle out. So I went to Tesla, had that replaced. It was actually, I mean, luckily enough, it was done under warranty. So while it was there, they're like, hey, we noticed this other one acting up. Can we fix that one too? And I'm like, please. It's covered. <laughs> yeah. So like, I mean, I, I love it. Like I've heard horror stories about people who've had issues at, at dealership, you know, the Tesla getting repairs and stuff. But I had a great experience and I, I love it. Um, but while we were doing that, I drove a Tesla. I drove a Model X. You drove the performance version. The P100D. <laughs> yeah, I, I about died. And I, all I could think about was how incredible this car was and how much I would love to own one. But for like 80 grand, like that's, that's more than I think most people, your average American people can afford. Yeah. I mean, even with your gas savings, it's just not feasible. No, at that so, point, it's, it's a luxury vehicle. It's, it's a want, not yeah, a need. It's not a necessary thing. So, well, 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 with that, like I got thinking, what about like, what about the rest of the market? What about the rest of the Teslas? You know, at what point will they be affordable? Because like my car, the whole reason I bought my car was because it was cheap. I mean, I bought it's it's used. It's a 2013, and it had like 50,000 miles on it, and I bought it for 35 grand. It's a great deal considering brand new. It was 75, 84, nine or something was uh -huh. the sticker. So I mean, that's pretty crazy. And I've been in this vehicle many times. I mean, it still feels like an $85,000 car. Yeah. It performs. It does. Yeah. Like an $85,000. It doesn't have the range that it used to, but yeah, I just, I wonder like when we were looking at, when we had that, the, the Model X, my wife, like I never thought she'd be convinced that she wanted to buy a Tesla because she made fun of me and refused to drive my car. Oh really? Yeah. But, uh, when she drove that, she took it to Costco cause I had, I had the, the other car mm -hmm. and, uh, She's like, she sends me a text and she says it's Costco approved. And I'm like, sweet, let's buy one. <laughs> so I was like, maybe we, maybe you can afford a used one. Because if my car was half price, yeah. you know, but it's a six-year-old car, maybe we could find a Model X that's a few years old that's, you know, 50, 60 grand. That was not the case. That was not the case at all. So that's what kind of got me thinking about all this is what, like what's going on with the Model, the Model Y. So when the Model Y comes out, there's going to be a bunch of people who I think people who wanted to buy a Tesla... They bought an affordable Model 3, but they, honestly, I've had people, I've talked to people who own the Model 3. Yeah. That are, they get in my car or they see my car and they're dissatisfied with how much space is not in the Model 3. Right. So having the Model Y gives you more space. So are you suggesting that people that own a Model 3, let's say they own one for two or three years. Yeah. That they might upgrade to. 100%. Model Y. Exactly. So. I don't yeah. think it'd be your one that just got their delivery six months ago. No. But people that have had their Model 3 for two, three years now. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you consider the fact that it's, if you buy, if you only could afford the entry level Model 3, that's probably not, not going to be a, an upgrade you're going to be able to make. Yeah. Because like the base Model Y is 48,000 with no, with no options. And right now base <coughs> Model 3 is what, 41 you said? Yeah. Last time I looked at configuring one, it was about 41. What about used? So I did look at the used prices and that, that, that was like the most interesting part of all of this is like, so a used Model S right now, you can buy like a, a three-year-old Model S for, let me pull up my numbers so I'm not uh, giving bad numbers. The so Model you, S is a little older. 
Go so you used Model S that's a, that's a 2013 or 16, so okay. a three-year-old car, mm -hmm. with, is about $40,000 with about 60,000 miles. $40,000. That's not bad. Yeah, it's I mean, pretty good. Obviously, it's used, but again, like I said earlier, I, I would buy a three- or four-year-old you know, used Model S, possibly over a newer vehicle. Would you buy it over a 2018 Model 3 with 10 to 15,000 miles for 50,000? I just like the S better. I, I agree. But like with these numbers, so look at these numbers. But like you said, would I consider a Model Y? Yeah, I think I would. So right now, like these are the numbers right now, and I'm gonna, I want to compare these six months from now okay. because I guarantee yeah, the there's going to be change. so many people that have the Model Y. They bought it because, or X, wow, Model 3 because it was cheap. Mm -hmm. They bought it because it was forty grand, right? And they spent a little bit extra on options, yeah. But they need more space, yeah. So now they move to the Model Y, right? Now you've got a whole bunch of Model Three so sitting the market, on the market with some used Model Three. Yeah. So now you've got a supply and demand issue. There's not as much demand for right. those cars, so the price is going to come down. So well, and the market's just now starting to get really saturated with Model Threes because they're yeah. now they're really starting to fill all the orders. They have. So Model Y starts at 48,000 with a five seat configuration. To go to seven seats, it's 51,000. And the Model X, you can get the seven seater configuration with three year old uh, Model X with 55 to 60,000 uh, dollars with about 40 to 60,000 miles. So how much, how much did you say again? 55 to 60,000 for a used Model X. So. I think I believe that if you're in the mar if you're in the market for a a Tesla mm -hmm. and you don't have to have a brand new car, the second quarter of next year is your time to buy. Because there's a lot. I mean, and as the Cybertruck comes out, it's going to change too. Now it's going to be a really big change. One of the considerations, though, is warranty, reliability, Dude. repairs. Yeah, and you kind of addressed that already. A little bit. The, you got a 2015? 13. It's a 13. It's you old. 2013. One of the first cars. But you were able to get all these repairs covered under warranty. So I, I don't know what the extended warranty looks like and how you go about getting that. I, I believe it's an added option that you can get. Um, but my car uh, had 55,000 miles on it when I took it in and had some work done. And they replaced three handles. They did. They installed a new um, TPMS uh, system in there because mm -hmm. the old one was bad. Yeah. And uh, they they updated it because they need, they wanted to update it to, to the new technology. That's what was happening. That's what was going wrong with it. Yeah. And they flashed the computer. So like normally that would have cost uh, each door handle is like a thousand bucks. So like you 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 don't want to own a Tesla out of warranty necessarily. No. Uh, like I mean like any car, but it's it's like it's like a luxury car. Yeah. So like it's like an Audi. If you had a problem with an Audi, you're probably a thousand bucks anyway. You are easy for anything. Yeah. So, true. I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm just curious to see what that what it ends up being. But uh, I'm pretty sure I'm right because <laughs> I'm usually, <laughs> As you always do. I usually am right. <laughs> but uh, what do you think? Like, if you could buy any car, I mean, we're not even talking Cybertruck because I feel like the four cars that are currently on the market are close enough to mm -hmm. compare yeah. that the same person might buy any of those cars. Right. The Cybertruck is a whole different beast. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think, Brian? I've got my opinions, you know, um, I, I don't own a Tesla, I've always kind okay. of leered at them from a distance, yeah. I, I love them. Which one would I buy? Well, if I had my if I had my druthers, I'd buy, I think I'd go with the Model S over the X. There's one reason only that I wouldn't buy the Model X, and I've heard bad things about the Falcon doors. Yeah. It's a I, cool vehicle, it's an awesome vehicle. I, I, I love the Model S, it's got plenty of space, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, Pretty good size sedan. I mean, it's comfortable. And you can get it in a seven seat configuration. You get a seven seat. He has it in seven seat so, configuration. I mean, it's one of the rare ones that do. Yeah, there's not very many. I don't think I'd buy it in that configuration. I think the, the five seat would be fine for me. Well, it's because you drive an Acura. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but we're curious what would you buy? If you had to buy a, a Tesla right now, what would you buy? Do you feel comfortable buying a used car? Well, if you don't, because we're going to be doing another segment coming up soon on buying a used Tesla and what to look out for. So what questions do you have? What are you concerned about when it comes to buying a used Tesla? 
Um, we'll bring that to you very shortly. And let us know what yeah. information you're looking for. for sure. First, we want your comments on what you'd yeah. like to buy, what you're looking for if you would buy a Tesla. But tell us, tell us your comments about what you think in general about Tesla. What do you think about the EV market, the way it's going? What information could we bring to you that would help you make a decision in regards to this topic? Agreed. Well, that's we, what uh, we do. So let us know. We definitely want to bring all the information we can as, as much as we can, as fast as we can. And uh, you guys are the reason we have this channel. And yeah. we really appreciate you watching. And uh, before we leave, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit the button right now. Like I said, I'll come hunt you down and give you wet willy. And don't forget to check your blanker fluid. We're out. <laughs>